everybody, this is Cold Reptiles, and today I'm going to be talking about respiratory infections and scale rot. So first of all, this is Robert Petri. I call him Rob for shirt. He's a seven-year-old albino ball python. He is um, kind of stunted for his age. He's also a bit underweight, if you can see his spine. I'm working to get that weight back up. So first I'm going to talk about scale rot and then we'll get into the respiratory infections. What causes scale rot is them being on constantly damp bedding. So this can be caused in ball pythons if you have like a tropical setting or tropical bedding and they're constantly on that wet bedding that can cause scale rot or how he got scale rot is if you're trying to treat for mites, which I plan on doing a video later on how to treat for mites, but if you are treating for mites and you keep that paper towels damp, which I don't recommend you do because that is how he got scale rot, they'll get scale rot because they're not used to being on that constantly damp bedding. Now for tropical species like false water cobras and things like that, they need like damp bedding. But for a ball python, it's not that case. So the signs and the symptoms of it would be them acting lethargic, they are not moving, or sometimes they'll just move constantly and they just won't stop moving. And that's obviously a sign they're not feeling well because they should not be doing that. Another sign would be if they're losing their appetite. Now, I kind of be careful with this because ball pythons are notorious for going on hunger strikes, meaning that they just randomly stop eating and sometimes they won't eat for upwards of like six months. And that can be pretty alarming to some new snake owners, but don't confuse that with them having scale rot. Lastly, the most obvious sign they have scale rot is um, pinkish and brown, and if it gets bad enough, black looking scales. So I'm gonna show you what it looks like. I'd like to clarify real quick that I am not hurting him by holding his head like that. I have a firm but gentle grip on his head, so I'm not hurting him, I'm not holding too tight. So he's fine, I would never do anything to hurt him. So just wanted to clarify that. So there are kind of two methods you can do to treat it. You can either soak them in betadine two times a day for 15 minutes each, dilute a betadine water. Or our vet has also recommended that you just keep it as dry as possible. Now, of course, for treating respiratory infections, it needs to be humid, but the ground, the bedding needs to be dry. So keep the bedding as dry as possible, and if it's not bad enough, it should just go away on its own. So signs of a respiratory infection would be things like loss of appetite, which also be careful with that because don't assume your ball python has a respiratory infection just that they went on a hunger strike. It's normal most of the time. Another sign would be lethargy. So we took him to the vet and the vet gave him antibiotics and we noticed that this was out of his usual behavior. So if you notice your snake acting out of their usual behavior and they're acting very odd and they're just doing stuff that wouldn't normally happen and it's just started, then take your snake to the vet if you need. A lot of things, it's not as simple as just you know raising the humidity. You really need to go to the vet. More signs of a respiratory infection would be things like excess mucus in your mouth. If you see drool coming out of their mouth, then that's a big sign of a respiratory infection. Another sign would be wheezing or huffing where you can physically hear their breathing. A snake of this size, you should not hear their breathing. Sometimes with bigger snakes like boas and retics and brooms, you can hear their breathing sometimes, but definitely with a snake of this size, you shouldn't hear their breathing. Another sign would be excessive yawning, and they'll just open their mouth and close it. That's a big sign, and another one would be breathing through their mouth, which kind of goes along with their yawning. It's where they just open their mouth, they kind of gape it. Kind of looks like a bearded dragon um, when they're basking, how they gape their mouth sometimes, and they'll just sit like that, and they're trying to breathe through their mouth. So those are the main signs of a respiratory infection. So now let's get into how to treat it. 
they're going to need antibiotics. So it's very important to go to your vet if you have any questions. So I'm about to show you us um, giving him a shot and how to give a shot. I'd like to say though, go to your vet for this. Don't just try to dosage it yourself. Go to your vet, let them tell you how to do it. So we're gonna show you how to do that now. So make sure when you're giving him the shot that you do it on the top third of his body. And of course your hands are clean so nothing gets in it. And of course you wanna wipe down the area, which is what I'm gonna do now, to make sure that it's completely clean. So now my mom's gonna come over here and she is going to give him the shot. You want to give him it right off to the spine and you want to hold his head down so, so that not, they don't squirm. Not on the spine, yep. but to the side. And hold down, gently hold down the rest of your body so they don't squirm when you're giving them the shot. Flat part of the needle, the top, will be facing up and you don't want to give it in a scale. So you find an oh, wait, X between wait. the scales. Of course you don't want to puncture it like she said, so. Okay, you find an X. Sometimes a little will ooze out, that should be it. Just kind of wipe that up. Don't be alarmed if there's like a teeny bit of blood because I mean, of course you did give him a shot. But that is how you give a snake a shot, how to treat a respiratory infection, and how to treat scale rot. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye. Stop it, that's it. As, wait, then, as well as, um, so this, another symptom would be lethargic, but lastly, the, like, most, <clears throat> what's the word?